Create content that attracts, converts, and keeps your ideal clients. This is Content Cells. Hi, you're listening to the Content Cells podcast, the show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. Welcome to episode 154. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co host, Michelle Falson. Hey, Michelle. Hey, hey, Susie. We have been hanging out quite a bit this week and I am loving it. Me too. Can never get enough Michelle time, <laughs> especially since Dinner. COVID when I don't get to see you in person as much as I used to. Oh. I'm glad we've been hanging out. Um, but there's a lot going on at the moment between our Mastermind event, which we are prepping for right now, welcoming new masterminders into the program. Um, yeah. And um, producing a number of fabulous episodes of the Content Soul Show. So um and pre-planning some future episodes. It's all about the planning. Yes. So we're seeing a lot of each all other, even if planning. it is virtual. Um, and uh, if you're listening, look out. You know, when Michelle and I get together, we usually cook up <laughs> a bunch of stuff. PJ's always saying, oh, my gosh, you two cannot have too much time together because you keep creating things. Um Unsupervised time, oh, it's right. dangerous. Yeah, no adult supervision, <laughs> that's what happens. <laughs> so, Michelle, today we are talking about one of our favourite subjects and that is lead magnets. But we're talking about something a little bit different um, because we are all for creating lead magnets and the power of lead magnets. But today we're specifically talking about the number one mistake that most people make when they create a lead magnet. We sure are. Lead magnets, we love them when done well. (laughs) They can be the entry point for literally multi-million dollar campaigns. They are that thin edge of the wedge that you can use to introduce people to you and your products and your services. And lead magnets can take many forms, like whether it's a PDF of an ebook or a blueprint or a guide through to webinar trainings, short challenges, even competitions could be a lead magnet, free online courses, free tools, calculators, and so much more. The main thing they all have in common is that they are usually free and they usually require someone to exchange at least their email address in exchange for um, getting access to the free resource, Mm. to the free lead magnet. Yeah, like Michelle said, we love them, but when they are done badly, they are a terrible time suck. And even when they generate leads, if you're making this one mistake that we're covering today, those leads are not likely to turn into paying customers to turn into sales. So you might be asking, Susie, Michelle, what is this one mistake? Well, Mm. let me start by telling you what it is not. It's not about the format of your lead magnet. Michelle just mentioned PDF ebooks, blueprints, guides, webinars, short challenges, competitions. It's not about the format. This mistake can apply whether you're offering a calculator or a course or a blueprint. It's also not about the design that you use either. So really, a really badly designed lead magnet that avoids making this one mistake we're talking about is almost definitely going to do better than a beautifully designed lead magnet that's overlooking this one mistake. It's also not about what you're going to call your lead magnet or the photo you use on your Facebook ad or how long it is, how many pages it is, or any of the many things that we see people stressing about, sweating over and spending way too much time on, completely ignoring this one important mistake that can undo all of their hard work even before they've started. So are you ready for this number one lead magnet mistake? <laughs> I'm hearing your, yes, your, your, your yeses. Ready. Yes, I'm hearing your yeses. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it is this. The number one lead magnet mistake is not aligning your lead magnet with your core offer. Now, what does that mean? It means thinking, oh, I really should grow my email list. Let me think of a lead magnet so I can get some people signing up to join my email list. It means thinking, oh, this is a really good idea. Maybe I can turn it into a lead magnet. It means looking at what someone else is doing and thinking, hey, I'd better create an online calculator tool that people can use for free as well. And I want to give that in exchange for their email address or whatever it might be that you see a competitor or someone else doing that you think you should also be doing. Yeah, great examples of what that mistake looks like. If you're thinking any of those things, it's very likely that you are committing this number one lead magnet mistake. Um, And the reason why none of these things are about aligning with your lead magnet, sorry, about aligning your lead magnet with your offer is because each of those things Susie just mentioned, you know, thinking, oh, I should grab my list. Hey, let me grab a lead magnet or, hey, I've got this idea. I might turn it into a lead magnet or, um, hey, look what they're doing over there. 
I'm going to copy that. All of those um, ideas um, begin with an outside in approach. That is, you've started thinking about the lead magnet, the outside, um, the front end of your marketing funnel, if you like. But actually, that's the kiss of death for your lead magnet and its effectiveness and how many sales you're going to get ultimately. Because instead of starting at that front end of your marketing funnel, thinking about the lead magnet first, you need to start at the other end of your marketing funnel. And that is thinking about the thing you want people to buy first. And from there, you reverse engineer a process that eventually leads you to thinking about your lead magnet. So even though your lead magnet is the first thing that people are going to see when they kind of take the journey with you, it's really one of the last things you think about. If you're thinking about the lead magnet first, it's kind of like the tail wagging the dog. Mm. Like if you see a competitor doing the calculator and you think, oh, I should have one of those. Well, why Why should you have one of those? Mm. You may not need one of those at all. Let's think about what you want to sell and think about a process that makes sense. It's going to lead people through a journey um, that makes them really aligned with from the get-go the thing you want them to buy. And that is, that's the only way to really get your lead magnet aligned with your offer, to start with the offer first. Because if you start with the lead magnet first, mm. you know, you could end up in a completely different destination. You know, the calculator and then you think, well, after the calculator, I'm going to give them something else. And then after that, I'm going to give them something else. And that's how you end up with a process that's like got 75 steps in it mm. and none of them really lead to the offer. Mm. Um, you know, if you start with a topic idea that you think is really great, it might get leads, but they might be the wrong people or the right people, but at the wrong stage in their business or life to use what you've actually got on offer. Or the idea could just be really hard to springboard from into then talking about your offer. It's like, what? Why are you, you were talking about this and now suddenly you're talking about that. Mm. There's some, if you're a regular listener of the show, there's a couple of things I want to point out that you will have heard before that I want to mention here. So Michelle's just talking about this reverse engineering this funnel. And you will have heard Michelle talk about the marketing mountain. And so when people come into your world, they're at the bottom of a mountain, at the top of the mountain is what you ultimately want them to buy. And what we're saying here is that the lead magnet has to have some relationship with the thing that you want them to buy. And so you want to know what that thing is, what the outcome is, before you go creating a calculator or a PDF or a challenge or any of those things. Similarly, we've talked about the buyer's journey here. And at the bottom of the buyer's journey is the awareness stage. And so before you can move into conversion, people have to know you exist. So your lead magnet is a way for people to know you exist. But you have to know why you want them to know that you exist and where you're leading them to. So the reason this number one mistake um, is so important when it comes to lead magnets is that you can spend a ton of time and money and resources generating leads. They opt in for your lead magnet, they give you their name and email address, but then they go nowhere. So I'll talk from personal experience because I have felt this pain. <laughs> so we are good at generating leads and for years, um, we generated thousands and thousands of leads, but we had no real plan for what we wanted them to do next. Recently, though, we never put a lead magnet out there or even create it until we have a plan for it. And I'm going to give you some of those examples today. In fact, we don't even think about lead magnets at all until we're thinking about a strategic offer and then we reverse engineer and think about what is the lead magnet that's going to get people closer to that offer. So can you see that shift? It's been a big uh, shift in the way that we approach it. But every single day inside the Her Business community, inside of our free Facebook group, uh, we kept seeing people making this number one lead magnet mistake. And that's what inspired uh, this episode. So instead of creating a lead magnet, putting it out there, generating leads, and then not having a specific plan for those leads, and very often then just going and making another lead magnet to rinse and repeat that all over again, we now only ever have the minimal number of lead magnets created, and they're all the result of having a specific objective of what product or service that we want to sell. It has a very specific role in the whole sales process. I love it. And I've loved watching this journey that you've been on and this shift, you know, happening and how you've embraced that and not only embraced it, but really run with it and got such great results from that. And I wanted to 
look at this, um, you know, with another real example, because I think examples are so helpful. And um, both Susie and I were working with one of our masterminders recently. She's someone, she's a real go-getter. She's a fast action taker and she can create things, you know, on, on a, you know, she has an idea today, it's already created tomorrow. And that is awesome, but it can also mean you create a whole bunch of stuff that maybe you should have hit the pause button on. Um, She really understands her market. She's a total expert in her chosen topic area. And so you would think that combination of things is just a guarantee of success. Now, Susie and I were doing a strategy session with her to work through her marketing strategy. She's wanting to sell a specific high ticket offer that she um, has created. And she came to the strategy session with her thoughts kind of mapped out on how she was going to reach her target. And um, she had all these lead magnets. She had several lead magnets in the equation, um, but there was no real cohesive plan as to how the topic of each of those lead magnets led into this high ticket offer that she had. And then, um, you know, we kind of dug a bit further And she's literally created dozens and dozens of lead magnets, but not really any one single end-to-end marketing funnel that can take a lead generated by all those dozens of lead magnets and convert it into a sale. Mm. And this is not that uncommon. And Mm. that's why we wanted to do this episode, because there's so much focus on creating random lead magnets one after the other, rather than creating a step-by-step marketing funnel that sells your core offer, and then and only then creating a lead magnet that's super relevant to your offer to get the attention of your idle client and get them opting in to that entire marketing sequence. The other thing we wanted to tune you into today is that this focus of aligning your lead magnet with your core offer extends beyond just creating the funnel in the first place. You also want to keep an eye on that funnel and over time strategically test different lead magnets to see which one is most aligned to your offer and getting the best sales conversion results. And we've been doing um, some testing for sure at her business over the last couple of years. And so I've got a couple of specific examples that are happening in our business right now. So our core offer is Her Business Network and membership to the Her Business Network. It's a monthly paid membership for which you get all sorts of support and benefits to grow a a sustainable business. And it includes things like free promotion um, of our business members, monthly masterclasses and training, uh, a forum where you can ask all sorts of questions to get you unstuck in your business, lots of networking, uh, a book club, accountability groups. It's a wonderful, wonderful offering. That is our core offer. That is our bread and butter. It's our main event. And to introduce people into the network, we about two years ago, introduced a quiz. It's a, the What's Your Networking Personality quiz. And people can determine whether they're a very independent network or they're, uh, we have all these different types that you can be. And off the back of the quiz, um, people obviously are interested in understanding networking and building their network. The next step for them is to then when we open the doors a few times a year, which we do, then they would join to the network. They would join the network. So that kind of makes sense. It's quizzes about networking, we're a network. Okay, now you know your networking personality, come to the network and network. But over that same period of time, because we were trying to grow our database, one of our strategic objectives was to generate 5,000 new leads, this is a couple of years ago, to our database, we tried a couple of other things as well. So we had the quiz going, but we also, we created this report and it actually came off the back of one of our content sales episodes. It was called the 20 Must Enter Awards for Women Business Owners. And... Um, It's pretty self-evident what it was and it was so popular being downloaded left, right, centre, adding these people to our database. We also did, and we did this for two years in a row, we did a wonderful summit, the Business Growth Summit for Women Entrepreneurs with world-class speakers and inspiring entrepreneurs and best-selling authors and all those sorts of things. But here's the important thing. We analysed our results of the quiz, the 20 Must Enter Awards and the summit. to see how good a job did those lead magnets do to converting people to what is our core offer and that is membership. And we track this over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And because we're not open all the time, we can't sell membership or we don't sell membership all the time, that lead magnet had to be so relevant that it kept 
it really attracted so much the ideal client. That, so then when we did open the doors, it was a pretty automatic yes. Now we did have to nurture those leads, but I won't talk too much about that. But it was just important for us to do the analysis and keep our eye, not just on that number of people on the database, that's kind of a vanity metric. Those people have to be people that are interested and are going to want to buy your core offer. Mm. Oh, you just said two words that I think are so important. Vanity metric. You know, we um, you mentioned how uh, you were getting all of these leads in. And while that's an important number to look at, and be a bit of a red herring. It's a real trap. And we see this all the time. You and I, when we're talking to people, they say, hey, I'm getting a thousand people a week opting in for this free lead magnet guide that I have. But what they don't know or what they haven't looked at or aren't tracking is, are those leads going on to buy? You know, do they have a step-by-step process to take people that opt in into a conversion? And I'd rather a lead magnet that got a hundred people a week, but getting half of those to buy sales a week from just a hundred leads versus that lead magnet that's getting a thousand leads a week and only getting 10 people buying. Mm. And that's exactly what we found with our lead magnet. So our wonderful summit, which you can hear probably my voice. I love our summit, all class speakers, you know, thousands of people, you know, over the two summits, we generated something like 8,000 leads. So really great for lead generation, really popular. A lot of work. I'll talk about that in a minute. We also got thousands of leads from the 20 Must Enter Awards. So that worked really well as well as a lead generator. But when we actually look more closely at our statistics, this highest number of sales was from the leads generated by the quiz. Even though it generated fewer leads, they were more likely to buy membership, our core offer. There was one other lead magnet that we introduced, Michelle, and that was an online networking event, a free webinar, which again, nowhere near the numbers of the free downloads or the summit, but really good at attracting people who then wanted to continue to work with us. So right Mm. now we are doubling down on the quiz. In fact, we're actually adding an upsell and optimizing that sales funnel because it's proved to be most aligned with our core offer. And our summit, even though I love it, even though I love doing the interviews and having all the speakers and running this five-day event, it's just on hold right now. We've created something else. It's our coaching week, which we trialed in November. As you can hear, we try different things. We're always trying to find the thing that converts best. And what we found was that a third of the people who participated in coaching week, joined membership because it was a really hand in glove fit. And because during that week, we were able to demonstrate what membership was and the value of membership. And if you're a regular listener to the show, be sure to tune in to the last episode, which was about how to demonstrate your product or service. But going back to the point here, even though the summit was the greatest lead generator, it wasn't the most hand in glove fit to making our offer. So as a lead magnet, fantastic for generating leads. As far as generating leads that turn into our ideal client, we found other things that while the numbers are lower, the conversion is better. And the summit took three months to prepare and has a thousand million moving parts. So (laughs) So it's on hold for the minute. There's so much. Gosh, there's so much in what you're saying there, Susie, because, um, you know, you do try things, but it is kind of like a scientist like testing things out in a very sort of strategic way. You're not just like madly creating 50 million lead magnets and throwing them out there. You're you're really strategically choosing the lead magnet. You're testing it. You're looking at results and then you're innovating. You're turning things off. You're turning things on. You're dialing things up based on the numbers. And I hope people are kind of being inspired by that. Uh, And it doesn't mean you have to be complicated. You just Mm. really need to know a couple of numbers How many people are opting in? And then uh, what is happening with those leads? Are they turning into sales? And, you know, people think lead magnets are about generating leads. Guess what? They're not. They're about generating sales. And that is the big bait and switch that people Mm. make. They forget that it's about generating sales. They think it's about generating leads and they take their eye off the most important number, which is why we always begin with the end in mind. We start with what do I want to sell? Because my lead magnet is about generating sales. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, 
the summit, even though you love it, I mean, I have to admire you for putting it on hold. I know how much you love that uh, summit. And it is, it's amazing. But if you'd have said, look, I'm sticking with the summit because I really love it, that's really starting at the front of your funnel. You know, that's saying, I want to make a lead magnet that's a summit without any Mm. real connection to the strategy. So it's not reverse engineering from your offer. What you're doing is you've, you reverse engineered from your offer. You thought a summit would work. It has, and it has worked, but it just hasn't yet created the conversions that you're looking for. So because you have this, this commitment to reverse engineering for your offer, you can clearly see need to turn the summit off, even though I love it. And, you know, there's that expression often in writing where you need to kill your darlings. You know, you might have a paragraph you absolutely love mm. and your editor tells you, hey, you got to cut it. And, and you know, you, you cry as you put the red line through it. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes it's like that with our lead magnets. Whereas a lot of other people are experimenting with lead magnets just simply by creating lead magnet after lead magnet without any real strategy behind it. And that's, that's, that's the mistake. So it's about getting back to basics, no content without conversion. Your lead magnet is content, but what's the conversion job it's doing for you? Is it just generating leads that lead to nowhere, which is expensive, disheartening? It's why if that's happening to you right now, you probably feel like you're on that hamster wheel of like, oh my gosh, I just keep putting stuff out there and giving to my audience and they don't give anything back and, you know, all of these things can play in our minds. So this is the difference. What we're talking about right now, being having your lead magnet aligned with your offer and being really the last thing that you come up with, even though it's the first thing people opt in for, this is the difference between maybe the results you're getting and what you might be seeing other people getting. So you might be looking at somebody else in your space, a peer, and it looks like, well, they're just offering a lead magnet and they're doing the steps, but they've worked in reverse, which is why their lead magnet is getting the results. They've begun with the end in mind and aligned that lead magnet with their offer. So to recap, the lead magnet is really the last thing you create or near the end of the process, not the first. And when you do this, when you take on board uh, this mistake and you commit to not making this mistake anymore, you're going to guarantee that the offer is more relevant to people when you make it to them. And one thing that we've talked about a lot, and even just on a recent episode, uh, is this idea of the problem solution dance. So you know the ultimate solution that your offer provides. And when you're kind of reverse engineering, you need to figure out, well, Maybe I need to solve a smaller problem first or solve uh, a a problem that people think they have first and then I can open the door on a problem. I can teach them what to want. I can teach them that um, actually even though you think you need more leads, if that's what your lead magnet's about, what you actually need is to build a marketing system. So you could put a lead magnet out of how to generate more leads um, and then that solves that initial problem and then you open the door on the next problem, which is, hey, once you've got the leads, what are you going to do with them? Well, you need a marketing system. Come to our webinar and we'll teach you the marketing system. And then on the webinar, you teach them the marketing system and then you open up the door on a new problem, which is, hey, now you know what the marketing system is. Now you've got to actually implement it. You need to know the right copy strategies. You need to know the tech. You need to know this. You need to know that. If you don't know all of that, hey, come to our mastermind or come to our course or whatever the next Mm. step is that you want them to ultimately buy. Mm. Mm. So it's this constant pivoting between problem and solution. Sorry, I think you had something Yeah, I just wanted to add because, you know, some people, like I said, you know, our membership is closed and, you know, so so if you do have things that, you know, you only launch your course twice a year, then you might want to think about um, your lead generation activity being on steroids right at that point where you it's nice and close where you can give them that next step and the doors are opening as opposed Mm. to committing resources to doing lots of lead magnets throughout the year all the time so that you're always generating leads and then having to keep those leads warm. You might be better off spending your money or your time on strategically lining up your lead generation activity and when you're pushing that lead magnet, um, right there when it can go, it's part of the sales process is nice and tight, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And the point, you know, the really important point there is that leads go cold. If you aren't 
Exactly. Getting Mm. them into your list and then doing something fairly quickly with them in terms of making an offer, Mm -hmm. it gets much harder. And, you know, we've been finding, um, you know, more than 90 days, like that's why you don't keep your wait list. You don't, you know, if you're opening, Mm. you don't want people joining that wait list more than 90 days and really ideally, you know, not more than sort of 30 to 45 days. The the ones that are joining the most recent in that sort of sweet spot of the last few weeks are often the ones that are going to take the next Mm. step. So, recency, the recency, the, the the time since they've just joined your list or opted in for your lead magnet is a really important factor in conversion. And so it's a really important point you make about timing. And just to get back to the problem solution dance, um, I wanted to mention we have um, a podcast episode on that, um, which is episode 66, Turning Content into Sales with the Problem Solution Dance, which you want to check out. And we're also going to include a link today to today's show notes, which is a um, really handy um, worksheet, which helps you kind of figure out what your problem solution dance is. It helps you do this job of reverse engineering from your ultimate problem you're solving and how you're going to unpack that and really move people through a process of perhaps solving the problem that, you know, um, is the most pressing problem or a most obvious problem with your lead magnet. And then how do you open the door on a new problem? And then how do you solve that problem with the next step and then open the door on a new problem that's really all the time creating this tension around people wanting to take the next step to figure out what the next solution is. Mm. So that worksheet is available. We're going to pop it in the show notes. You can download it and you can start figuring out what that journey looks like for you. So before we wrap up today, I'll give you the URL where you'll find the show notes. And over on the show notes page, you'll get links to all the different things and resources that we've mentioned today. There's one other resource. um, And again, if you're a regular listener, you will have heard us talk about the idea of the step two in any sales process. Uh, And so where that comes in is someone goes to your website, they sign up for your newsletter, or they go to the PDF download, they sign up for your webinar. What happens when they do that? What is the step two? And this is where whatever they see next, what we refer to as the thank you page, becomes very, very important because this is where you can get people into momentum moving through your sales funnel. And so we have a whole episode on this idea of not leaving people waiting. So again, number one lead magnet mistake is it's not aligned to your core offer. The other mistake is that people give you the name and email address and then they wait. (laughs) <laughs> they wait for an email mm. or they wait for your webinar to come along and you've missed that opportunity when they're hot to trot. And so this idea of the step two um, is an episode you definitely want to listen to. It's episode 11. We did it way back when. It's one of our most referred to, most recommended episodes and it's called The Step Two Secret. And so we're going to put a link to that in the show notes as well. So Michelle and I are both curious, do you agree with us that this is the number one lead magnet mistake? What has been the biggest aha or takeaway for you from today's show? We would love to hear from you. We actually have a page for this podcast over uh, on Facebook. So if you just search for content cells, you'll find the page. And if you've been um, listening and you think, yep, okay, firstly, I've made that mistake or I have a question about the lead magnet mistake or yes, I definitely agree or I want to share my uh aha, then come on over to the page and comment, ask a question. Michelle and I are always there and very willing to engage with you and help answer any questions. Excuse me. I um, mentioned, I was talking to a couple of members of the Her Business Network um, because we had through January, we were focused on sales and marketing and members were growing their email list. And so I was in conversation with someone about this idea of lead magnets and they had multiple lead magnets and and I pointed out this mistake to them and it was like the lights had come on. They'd never actually Mm. thought about the fact that there needs to be alignment because their eye was on the prize of growing that number of people on their database. It was that vanity metric. But the moment they could see that they didn't need a dozen lead magnets, they didn't need to create one more, they just needed a lead magnet that was related to their core offer. It's a game changer. And it's going to save you a whole lot of time and energy from creating lead magnets when you're just really clear on what is at the top of your marketing mountain, what is your core offer, and then what is the most relevant lead magnet that's going to be at the entry point of your sales process or at the bottom of your marketing mountain to get people to the top. I love it. I've got colleagues that have got, Mm -hmm. um, have dialed this process in over years. Mm -hmm. They have one lead magnet Mm -hmm. and one funnel and it's been the same. For years. Yeah, and I love it. 
creating, you know, six, sometimes seven figures just because they've figured this out. So it, it really is that pathway to leverage for sure. Mm. So we mentioned the um, download that Michelle mentioned a little um, minute ago. And if you've been listening, you think I definitely want to get my hands on that problem solution dance worksheet um, so I can work out what my problem solution da- dance is and how I align my lead magnets with my offer. You can get that free download right now and also links to anything else we've talked to here on the show. And we've put those notes over at herbusiness.com forward slash lead magnet mistake or one word herbusiness.com forward slash lead magnet mistake. Now, before we go, I want to ask if you would be willing to leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. We love sharing these tips with as many business owners as possible and your review means a lot to us and it allows us to share these tips with more and more business owners who can really benefit um, and avoid the sort of mistakes we're talking about here today. So we have over 85 star reviews and I want to give a shout out very quickly to Siona Roberts of Hooked on Crochet. That's her membership. She helps women um, learn to crochet. And she, I had posted about our podcast episode. I don't know which podcast episode it was about. And she said, you were right, Oh, it was Susie. about the one. one you know what it? it was? It was the one with um, Shelley Brander, The Power ah, of a Niche. The Power of a Niche. She has that uh, knitting niche, which is really yes. relevant to Siona too. Ah, that's exactly what it was. And I had, um, you know, um, said to Siona, because she's part of our membership, I think you're going to really love this one. This one's a must for you. And she said, you were right, Susie. I did love the most recent uh, Content Sales podcast. It fills me with even more hope and joy for what the future will bring as she builds her Hooked on Crochet membership. And another member piped in, Adriana, and said, I just listened to and it confirms my little niggle of what I should do that I have started to move towards. Bring on the crochetpreneurs. (laughs) She's also a crocheter. (laughs) So thank you to Siona. Thank you to Adriana for piping in and sharing the love around that episode with Shelley Brando. And that's that's a must listen if you haven't had a listen to that one. Um, that one was very popular. Michelle, yeah, what do we have coming Susie. up in the next episode? We have got uh, a really, uh, well, I always love it when we have a special guest and this is a special, special guest. It's an amazing <laughs> person who's already been on the show once before and you loved her so much. We're bringing her back and that is the ever wonderful Victoria mm-hmm. Labam. And Victoria is just about to launch a brand new book called Risk Forward. It is a really amazing book. I've been lucky enough to see a sneak peek. And we'll be talking to her about that book, what the process has been like, um, also how to risk forward when the way isn't 100% clear, whether that's writing a book or doing some other things that might um, scare you or that you're just, you know, everybody's so fixed on having really clear goals and plans. And there are times in our lives when we're not clear. What do you do then? Well, Victoria says we risk forward. Um, There's so much goodness ahead coming up in that interview with Victoria, which is two weeks away from this particular uh, air date of this episode. Yes, and I'm really looking forward to that conversation and to getting my hands on a copy of the book, uh, which is um, not out right now as we are, as you're listening to this episode, but it will be very, very soon. We'll give you more details in that episode with Victoria Laban. Um, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button to subscribe to the show and get your episodes automatically dropping into your app, whether it's Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts or Google Play, go ahead and do uh, that now and we'll be back with you in just two weeks from the release of this episode. Michelle, anything you want to say before we go today? If you're listening and you have a lead magnet or you're in the process of working on a lead magnet, stop right now and (laughs) go and follow the process that we've outlined today. Go and reverse engineer from your offer and just make sure that that lead magnet really is aligned with what you're selling. It's attracting the people you want and that when they get to the point where they're ready, where you make your offer, they are really ready to buy. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Susie. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time on the Content Sales Podcast. Bye for now.